Uh, I'm Jan Humble. I lead the solution architecture team for our IoT Center of Excellence here in the Americas. And I want to thank as well uh, Yingting, uh, Ruben, Rina, and Albin as well to, for laying ground the foundation of some of the things that I'm going to talk to you about here today. So my <laughs> My demo seems to be more simplified this way when I don't have to go through all those things as well. So I strongly recommend if you're just joining for this session to go back and look at those those aspects as well, which is going to tell you a lot of the inherent capabilities of the platform that's going to facilitate some of the stuff we're going to talk about now. So in terms of, you know, as part of the field organization, I'm for part of the sales team and I help out on the technical, me and myself and the, and the technical support team uh, that I lead, uh, we we um, we provide all the technical support and architecture conversations to be had with various type of customers across different industries and and verticals, and we typically find ourselves in situations where we need to support multiple types of protocols. So in terms of the manufacturing facility, in terms of the clinical facilities in the healthcare space, in terms of <clears throat> other types of commercial offerings like smart buildings, energy conservation, and those type of things. We typically find ourselves with trying to establish a solid foundation, a cohesive foundation to be able to, to implement kind of device connectivity. Uh, and device connectivity, that means device connectivity across a multitude of different asset types. That could be machines, it could be sensors, it could be other uh, industry, industrial PCs, or any type of assets that we want to monitor and control remotely there. So what typically is a challenge in that space there? Okay, so we have typically you might want to have to introduce some sort of gateway device, a proxy or an implementation of a change in the firmware or software environment of these vendors or a third party kind of auxiliary gateway to be able to provide that, that, that access, that proxy into an IoT platform. I, of course, am biased towards uh, Software AG's own uh, Cumulosity IoT platform as well, but this it kind of um, relates to any other IoT platform as well. So when we typically find ourselves in these type of environments, there's tons of different, not only the protocols to be able to support, but different deployment strategies and methodologies and disciplines that we face there. So it's nice to have a solid foundation to be able to build across those. And even uh, identifying just a handful or even a couple of different protocols here establishes challenges in, in themselves. For example, exa example, managing the, the configuration of these across different disparate, disparate devices, Configurations that can be complex in, in themselves and uh, the ability to for support multiple types of protocols as well, per, perhaps in a single gateway device as well. So as an OEM, for example, if you're using some part of the thin edge technology, you might want to have a particular foundation of that adapter that you would host on that gateway and be able to deploy and just enable the feature functionality that you need on a case by case basis. So that is an incredibly nice facility to be able to have that as such, right? So I'm going to select a couple of these protocols and show you how we have implemented or in the way of evolving that type of integration to these kind of field bus protocols, which are kind of the common practices in the industries. Modbus in particular and OPC UA. But we stumble across all multiple of other type of things here. So now the things that I'm going to show you as well, just kind of to preface some of this, is that we've been working towards um, evolving or transitioning more towards a thin edge strategy to support uh, kind of our investment in the thin edge because that's kind of the way forward for us, providing kind of that consolidated holistic approach towards uh, providing integration across the board. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we work with partners that can, are also developing proprietary type of uh, in, uh, protocol integration forms as well there. So this applies to kind of every type of conceptual model that we or discipline that you're trying to uh, approach there as well. So imagine yourself then that you have with this thin edge foundation, you have your face like with, with different types of hardware manufacturers or hardware providers and the gateway side of things, for example, things like uh, WAGOs, HMS Flexis, Red Lion, Sierra Wireless, you name it. You want to have each of them have kind of their own approach. Most of these are open platforms of such that so you can embed in your own agents. And this is a perfect uh, opportunity now to embed thin edge as such, because then you have a generalized set of platform that you can, if, for example, you have a, a, an inventory challenge in your in the gateways that you want to do and you have to kind of procure from multiple vendors as such, you still have a single um, foundational piece to be able to work from. So that's a, also a nice feature there that you, you get out of the box. Uh, and then 
we can integrate, uh, typically the integrations that are needed here are directly through PLCs, through the protocol gateways, directly on control buses, and there are different ways to be able to integrate to these different protocols, right? We mentioned the, the, the ability to introduce a gateway or even um, to rework some of the firmware inside on some of these devices, but as well the ability to, in multi-hierarchical way, like the way that Albin was explaining, to be able to manage child devices and children of children devices and those type of things is incredibly important as well because we never know what type of topology we're going to be facing in some of these environments as well. So it's nice to have that secure and reliable connectivity, like the solid foundation within Edge. We have we provide an entire monitoring facility and and an update over the air of some of these things. As I, as I mentioned before, it can get relatively complex. Some of the industrial sites are remote or very difficult to get to or different different to logistically kind of operate on, very costly to send a technician over, the, over there as well. So incredibly important to have all these over the air features. The things that uh, Arena was talking about to be able to self-update the firmware itself. Maybe you're doing also a migration from one platform to another. That's kind of inherently out of the box to be able to do those type of things as well. <clears throat> and also the benefits to introduce things like ThinML in there, like this is a, a major, major ask from customers there. Now that you have that integration in place, that you want to be able to push those analytics onto, onto the edge. For various, of course, various reasons there, for cost factors, for example, you don't want to start pushing large volumes of data into the cloud, but you want to have very rapid response times on the analysis of the tax that you're streaming from those different protocols there as well. Okay, so this gives you also a nice architecture to work from. So you have all the underlying necessary pieces there to just concentrate on formalizing kind of your integration strategy across the protocol specifically, and don't have to worry about anything else there. Don't have to worry about the over the air, the mapping onto potentially multiple IoT platforms or target environments that you want to issue that data into, right? And also the remote configuration and logging facilities that you might need there as well. Now, features like ML and those types of things are nice to have as well as part of your ongoing journey, but typically the ongoing, the primary challenge is to be able to integrate in a seamless way and to be able to administer all these devices remotely in a cohesive way. So I'm going to uh, show you a little bit of a demo of how that looks like. Uh, I'm going to select, I'm going to transition over to, <clears throat> again, I said I was partial to Cumulosity, so I'm going to uh, kind of start there. So I have a couple of thin edge devices, um, one being a Debian uh, gateway, even base gateway uh, that's running on the system there. And what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to set up a Modbus environment, a Modbus uh, plugin into the Thin Edge, into the raw Thin Edge installation that I have. So essentially, I have my Thin Edge running, right? And typically, what I want to do here is enhance it. I can, of course, from the very beginning, have wrap everything up in a single package and, and off you go and you deploy it on, on my device with its firmware update process or whatever. But in this case, for example, let's say I want to add in my own plugin. Again, I'm, we are creating a plugin separately from the foundational or the core pieces of the thin edge. We just want to de deliver kind of the, the integration into that um, into that protocol, in this case, Modbus, right? So what I'm going to do, or what I have preset here to do already, so in, in real time here, in my software repository, I already have imported in this particular piece of software, which is my Modbus plugin. This is going to feed or, or couple in into the thin edge installation in that Debian device there. Okay, I specify which version. I can upload various different types of versions there for different architectures as such into, into my software repository, which is going to be then accessible for me to upload it to that device. And Cumulosity has also a nice feature to implement things like uh, device profiles in the case that I want to tell that a particular type of device or a, a class of device has to conform, conform to a particular set of software versions, and in which case those devices will automatically self-update themselves with the, with the latest version that is available to them. But in this case, I'm going to do it straightforwardly, manually. So I'm going to go back to my Thin Edge device, and although I have preloaded some of these things already, I go into my software here. I can already see all the software that I install here, but I can also install uh, the new one that I have preset there, the TE Modbus plugin. Uh, we went through in a, how to do that in a previous session there. So I already installed a TE Modbus plugin, and what that happened, what the the workflow around that is that it up it automatically pulls down that uh, that software piece, uh, that Debian distribution in this case, for example, it automatically deploys it. It sets up the configuration 
for you to also configure it remotely. So second to that, I want to be able to configure that device remotely. So I'm going to go, go into the configuration. That is, I want to tell it, for example, <clears throat> what is the Modbus service that I want to connect to and all the mappings required there. Now, imagine that I have a configuration as such remotely in a separate file, something like this. <clears throat> Let me just make that a little bit bigger. And Modbus, if you're not familiar with the, with the protocol, you essentially have to connect it to a, a server uh, and a particular address and also define various registries, very, 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 I'm sorry, various registers mappings that you need to do into the platform or decoding of the registry values that you're getting pushed into or the tax. You need to select, for example, the register you're interested in, interested in <clears throat> pulling data from and also decoding those registries in different ways. For example, there's a a formal length into the bits that form part of each value, and you can extract that value as such, uh, depending on different kind of heuristics around that. And here, as a, as a first approach, for example, for this particular implementation of this plugin, I have kind of a, a, a tumble file that I can define some other configuration through. Okay, so I have different registers defined here for that particular device or a particular machine that I'm going to be connecting to, various different registers and such. That configuration, I can push into my device as well through the configuration here. Uh, in the particular configuration I'm interested in is a, these are kind of all the configurations that I have enabled for that device that I want to be able to modify it remotely. In this case, my Modbus devices, this is the one that is pre-installed. I can get a snapshot already. I have a snapshot automatically here of what the current configuration on that device is. But if I want to update a new configuration for it, I have different configuration. I can filter out from my configuration repository here that I want that I want, and I can push that into my device as such. So once I have that configuration up in the device, everything the, the services is running now, the thin edge is connected already. Uh, so now it's pulling data. It's doing through the mapper also capabilities of the thin edge. It's like doing the conversion into specific cumulosity, which I, yeah, I set it up to connect to. Of course, I can also connect it to Azure. IoT hub if I needed to or any other type of other target there. In this case, I've already set that up. And the way that this works, you, you saw that kind of the case for child devices as well, right? So this is an agent. This is like a proxy into a, a, the, those devices that reside elsewhere. So this is going to be represented a, through a child device. So a child device, this is my configuration of that service and those registries that I wanted to connect to. And this is represented now as a child device that I'm managing and monitoring there. <clears throat> and those measurements I can see here, are the ones that are being pushed through the platform at the moment, right? These are a, a simulator they have running in the, in the background for a Modbus service as such with different registries and coils and various different things. If you're interested in that, I, I recommend you read upon what the Modbus protocol looks like as well. A nice feature here as well um, of cumulosity that we're evolving constantly as well is the ability to also, within the same interface, not only have to like rely on a, a textual-based <clears throat> configuration of the system as well. We also have a uh, visual configuration abilities as well through some of these things. I'm going to transition over to OPC UA to show you some of that as well. So in this case, you have the Modbus inter interface connected to very seamless to kind of build your own plugin or even perhaps modify that plugin accordingly to your own specific needs. Maybe enhance it further, make it more sophisticated, create your own IP around that as well. And you can deploy it easily integrated to the overall packaging and deploy it out in the field in every which way. Or have that as part of a multi-setup, multi-protocol setup that a single agent feature would, it would give you kind of access into as well, which is very nice to have as well, a single foundation to be able to administer those things. Uh, so now I'm gonna transition over now. I also have now um, an OPC UA Thin Edge agent, which is it works exactly, essentially analogously to the Modbus one. In this case, I have <clears throat> my thin edge deployed on a, an actual Docker container at this point in time, but I can specify, um, so, uh, sorry, I'm gonna go into, let's go back to this group and I'm gonna have the, the gateway agent rather, which is the agent that is going to administer the, the proxying into the, um, into the LPC UA server that I'm gonna be setting up. In this case, for example, the agent as I deployed on the edge, this is exactly the same plugin into the thin edge that we're working with Modbus. I guess I've uploaded the OPC UA mod, uh, plugin into it, and that gives me additional functionality into Cumulosity. In this case, I have the ability to configure my OPC UA server here, 
I'm pointing it to my local uh, OPC UA server simulator at the moment. I can add other servers as well because this is one too many. The agent supports multiple server configurations if you need to. And as once I have that set up, I can do the mapping directly in Cumulosity. I don't have, to, for example, to go into a text from file to be able to do that configuration itself. So in I have device protocol support here. I have multiple such. Uh, I can create a new device protocol here. So example, OPC UA. And I can select some of the servers that I already pre-connected. Uh, pre, uh, they will show up here. And I can select kind of the node, the node root that I want to select and start building um, the extraction from exactly. So I won't go into this as well. I have this particular address space set up for this OPC UA server. Uh, but once I have that set up, I select kind of the root that I want to pull from. I have already one preset here. <clears throat> and here I can select, I, I can specify, for example, the polling intervals and those type of things. And also the mapping configurations between some of those objects and essentially OPC UA gives you kind of a set of objects that you can pull data from with certain types of conversions that you need to do there as well. In this case, I have a particular power from a driver of one of these machines. And in this case, I have defined that this particular um, node object value I'm pulling out through this path configuration in that address space that I have for OPC UA. And what do I want to do with that value? Well, I have different options how to want to pr promote that into Cumulosity or to your, <coughs> or in Cumulosity specifically here, yeah, of course. I want to send a measurement, a, a, a kind of a numerical value into the platform as well. I can also, if if the <coughs> type of that object allowed me to, I can also send, for example, the content that as an event or create an alarm or something like that as well. So once I have that set up, I now have a, a configuration of all the different mappings that I need, including the server configuration and so on. In the same way that I did with Modbus, then I have now <clears throat> an instance of that new uh, protocol support, protocol mapping that is going to show up as a <clears throat> as a new device here for me. And that once I have that configuration in place, then I can start looking at the measurements and validate that as accurate and so on. So I have now power, which is now being pushed into the platform as such. So let's go back into a minute and hopefully we'll get some data in here. There we go. So we start pulling some data on the minute there from that OPC UA server. <clears throat> so just to re re recap, the ability to quickly start implementing different types of protocols or pull existing protocols, for example, with some of our offerings or part of the community um, authoring that's, that's happening at the moment and be able to plug it in and set up your own environment, uh, automatically have that monitoring and configuring that and also then push that in, or have the ability to then start pushing some of the ML capabilities, machine learning or analytical capabilities on top of the data extremely rapidly. And, a, and, a, and providing you a solid foundation to be able to deploy multiple protocols simultaneously here as well. Incredibly powerful. And then want to leave you with um, a little <clears throat> URL that you can also find. Sorry, let me just go back to my that where you can start finding some of the examples of implementations of some of these protocols as well. So that's it for me. <clears throat>